everybody, it's your favorite Big T, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, it is Monday, February 13th. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. If you could do me a huge favor, please hit the subscribe button down below there. I really, really appreciate it. Help me get to 4,000 subscribers. If you are already a subscriber, or even if you're not, please hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Um, I actually was going through looking at what to react to today, and I came across... This video from Michelle from My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. And it looks like it was just posted a few days ago, so it's it's fresh, it's new. But uh, I only watched a few min minutes of it because I was seeing if it's something I wanted to react to. I didn't watch the whole thing because I like to blind react to stuff. But uh, this, it seemed like it was very, very interesting. She, she was watching MTV True Life and came across what fat acceptance looked like in 2008. And it was funny and whatever so i'm gonna react to it and uh see what what it's like anyways getting into it right now hello and welcome back to the early 2000s your gushing gushers in your mouth you and your friends are deep into the discussion of the infamous battle between lil romeo and lil bow wow and who the hell's cuter all while the words baby fat is smacked across <laughs> i don't really remember that little bow wow romeo battle but when i was growing up for me, it was, you know, the late 90s and it was maybe early 2000s and it was, who's better, Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? And then, of course, 98 Degrees was part of that conversation. And I always got frustrated because all the girls, they were like, oh, all these boy bands are so hot and they have all these posters up. And they never gave me any attention, okay? So. <laughs> Cross your butt cheeks. One thing that was very, very popular in the early 2000s was thinness. The thinner, the better. And if you were slightly bigger than thin, you were fat. Remember when we all called Nicole Richie the fat, stupid one instead of the tall, thin, stupid? I mean, and that's absolutely stupid. Because there's nothing fat about Nicole Richie here. Like, the fact that we used to call people who were not stick thin fat is really what created the fat acceptance movement later on because it's really a rebelling of those beauty standards that led to um, people who are like Tess Holiday who think that they can be a model being over 400 pounds. And it's really setting a bad precedent because now there are so many more people who are joining this fat acceptance movement as a rebellious nature against the stick thin, uh, stick thin models. It's it's kind of ridiculous to you know go from one extreme to the other. You can fight against modern day beauty standards and say you know what Nicole Richie is not fat like that's stupid. Why are you calling her fat? She's she's normal. She'd probably even be considered skinny now. But you don't have to fight against it by gaining as much weight as you can and not caring about your health and saying that you're healthy at every size when obviously you're not. Good one, Nicole definitely was nowhere near being fat. What a time to be alive, right? So something that I would never think was a thing was fat acceptance in that time. But I started watching True Life on Hulu from MTV and the episode titled, I'm Happy to Be Fat came on. Pow, that's my booty. So in the episode, we follow three individuals who are of size or in their terms, fat, and think that they're better off this way. So we have Sharonda. Sharonda's the sweet, soft voice, plus size woman who loves being fat, but her family and friends want her to lose weight because they think obesity is not the healthiest thing. Then we have Mike, the obese gay man trying to find a serious relationship who happens to be very, very popular on chubby chaser dating websites. It's totally amazing making love to a boy that size. Yeah, it's not working. Okay, I didn't know that there were actually chubby chaser websites out there that hey, if you're a chubby person and you want to find love, you can just go on there and find yourself a chubby chaser. And that's something I would absolutely not choose to do, even though, you know, I tell you guys all the time how lonely I am and I wish I was in a relationship. It's like, that's something I'm not looking for. I am not going to look for somebody who is attracted to chubby people, which would, you know, change me into a not wanting to lose weight. I'd want to stay chubby to make this person happy. Like, that seems like a dynamic that you wouldn't want to have in your relationship. You want a healthy, normal, loving relationship. And you can't love somebody and want them to be chubby at the same time. You want them to lose weight, to be healthy, to, to live longer. Working out too well. I know I represent a body type that is very desirable to certain people. There's a thin line between feeling special and being objectified. 
How is that body desirable to people, though? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get the chubby chaser thing. How is that desirable to people? This guy, his, his boyfriend looks like a a bodybuilder of some kind. He, he's jacked, but he's attracted to, to fat people. Is it like some sort of taboo thing? It's like, I would never live that myself. I would never be fat because I'm all into fitness and I lift weights and I'm super strong. But man, I love making love to somebody who, who looks like that. I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a taboo thing. Yeah, he probably wishes he could like drain some, you know, cheddar cheese down his throat, but he, he's looking out for himself. So he's going to be with somebody who, who does do that because he finds that kinky. I don't know. I guess people like what they like and they're attracted to what they're attracted to. But again, I, I could never find myself in a serious relationship with somebody who had a kink over my size. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And then lastly, we have Roxy who was in college in the 2000s and is trying to start a club that encourages size acceptance, who's also very insecure when it comes to her weight and her, her overall looks. I have to be dead seven years to fit into this dress. So let's start with Sharonda. And Sharonda is not afraid to eat. I have a chicken finger plate, french fries. Texas toast. Hi, right, thank you for you today. Can I also have a blue cheese dressing? A woman of class. I'm a ranch girl myself, but I might have to dabble in dipping my Texas toast in blue cheese. So like I said, Sharonda's whole storyline is... I mean, that's sort of a normal meal compared to what some people on my 600 pound life are, are ordering. <laughs> She's confident. She loves being plus size. She loves food and will absolutely never stop eating what she likes to fit a pesky beauty standard. Looks yummy. I'm not supposed to eat blue cheese. I think people are afraid to eat the type of food I'm eating because society has told them it's not okay. I would never punish myself and eat things that I don't like just to fit society's term of skinny. Except like many people... Except it's not really society's idea of skinny. I mean, yeah, that's what I was saying in the beginning. Is that the whole fat positivity movement seemed to be this rebellion, this rebellious nature against the stick skinny models i'm trying to say it right sorry <laughs> but at the same time it's it's like eating that way is, is not being rebellious because you're not really harming anybody else you're not changing society you're not changing anybody else's mind you're harming yourself you're hurting yourself in the end by eating that so you're not doing damage to any kind of societal norm you're not changing the culture you're not doing anything but harming yourself of the body positive movement today, they will get their nails done, wear certain clothes, and go to salons to make sure their hair is looking fabulous. Count to three. One, two, three. They literally partake in every other beauty standard except for one. So pretty much still following all the other beauty standards so they potentially can find a mate to accept them or find them attractive. Girl, all I see is eyes on me. I feel so good right now. And she has absolutely no problem finding men to find her attractive. Beauty is subjective. And as you will see with the gay fat guy, the bigger the better for some. They absolutely love multiple roles all over their body. And that guy ended up getting a very, very fit man. He's just adorable. He's really handsome. He's really fat. And he's got a great personality. I mean, what, what more could I ask for? No. Why is that something that you want, though? I... I can't question it. If you're into really fat people, then then fine. But that that's a kink that, that shouldn't be there. Again, if you really care about this person, you really love that person, he looks like he is a happy meal away from dying of heart disease. Like, you should encourage him to lose weight, not encourage him to stay fat, because that's what your kink is. Not as a relationship, as like a little fling, which is not his goal. But he still got a fit guy. That's nice. Has to count for something. So as much confidence as Sharonda exudes, her friends are up her 280 pound butt cheeks about her weight. And Sharonda says when she was smaller, she was so like insecure. She didn't have that booming personality. She didn't have this glow that she has when she's fat, which I personally think the glow is grease. But she thinks that she's so much more just like confident being bigger. If you look at the pictures that I have taken in the past and the pictures that I've taken now, you can tell a complete difference in those pictures from everything. My face glows. She also says the weight gain was just, you know, it just kind of happened. Like it was a natural thing. And her friends are like, uh, that's stupid. So you're saying when you were a size two and four, God said, look, Shay, I'm just going to choose you gain this weight to lead the way. You're going to be the so. fat Moses. <laughs> fat Moses. <laughs> 
I'm going to let you be fat so you can lead the way. As a Christian myself, I just find that funny because I know God's telling me to lose weight because I want to serve him in the best way that I can. I know not all of you are religious. That's fine. You you, you do you. Uh, but, you know, I believe that I, I need to lose weight so that I can do more, that I can help more people. And I can't do it stuck in my bed, right? Like, <laughs> if you're all about yourself, you're not going to say that God created you that way because he didn't. You are giving yourself over to your food addiction. To lead the way, you're going to be the so. fat Moses, so. fat Moses, so. fat Moses. So she tries to tell them that this is her. I'm better now that I'm fat. I'm more confident, which means it's better. And I get a lot of... I don't understand this increase in confidence that goes along with increase in size. Most people would not be more confident being overweight. They would find that a hindrance to their love life. They'd find it a hindrance to, to just about everything in life, finding a job, being able to do more. And so you're in a lot more pain. You you have a lot more struggles being obese. So how does that equate to being more confident? It's like you're trying to find a reason to be more confident. And and, and you think, oh, I'm just happier. I, I have this glow because I'm fat. No, that's not true. Because you're trying to change society. You're trying to force that confidence on other people. You're trying to tell people you are confident because you don't actually want to change. But in reality, you're miserable. There's not a single person out there. And I've had a couple people say, hey, I'm fat. I'm happy. No, you're not. Stop lying to yourself. You're not happy being fat. You're happy with your food addiction. But you know your food addiction is killing you. It's harming you. It's doing damage to your body. It is removing you from society. And if you say that that is making you happy and more confident, you're lying to yourself. You just enjoy the pleasure that you get the almost sex-like pleasure that you get from your food. That's what you, you enjoy. There's nothing else positive about being fat, nothing at all. A lot of attention from men, which means it's better. And I'm healthy, I'm a healthy fat. I am healthy. There's no way they can say, I'm gonna drop dead quicker than a skinny person. Just because that fat person died from a heart attack don't mean this one will. Just because that fat person had diabetes don't mean I will get it. Just <laughs> <laughs> you're more likely to, yeah. That might not happen for you. You might decide, hey, I, I want to reverse this course and lose the weight and, and get healthy, and then that doesn't happen. You could probably live 10, 20 years and have nothing happen to you like, like I have. I've been fat since I was five years old, and nothing happened to me till the last few years. So you can live a good stretch of life and not have anything happen to you. But it's accumulated damage over years. That is what happens. Heart disease isn't going to happen immediately. You're not going to get that from being fat for a few years. It's accumulated damage on your body, on your joints. That, that happens over time. It takes time for cancer to develop. Like all those things, all the problems that come along with fat do not hit you immediately. And that's why so many people in the fat positivity movement is like, you can be healthy at, at any size. You can be healthy and be 100, 200, 300 pounds or overweight because it's like it, it didn't hit them immediately when they're young, when they're in their 20s, when they can move more. But I'm telling you, once you get into your 30s, like that movement slows down and, and your health starts deteriorating and your body starts breaking down. Just because I go to the drive through and order a chicken finger plate, french fries, Texas toast, and smother in blue cheese dressing multiple times a day, seven days a week, doesn't mean I'm going to get problems like all the other people that do what I do. I'm special. I'm pretty. Yeah, they're not going with it. Well, I'm happy that you're happy that you're fat, but I don't care what you say. Excessive weight gain is unhealthy. So Sharonda and her friends go shopping so they can find clothes, and Sharonda can prove that being fat is absolutely no different than being thin. She does this by being upset that she can't find cute clothes like her smaller friend. If I go to my section, I would not be able to find that dress to my size. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. That's one of the side effects, the societal consequences that I talk about all the time to being overweight. They don't make those kinds of dresses or that kind of clothes in your size. If I want to get some clothes right now, I'm still wearing some big stuff, but I'm, I don't want to say outgrowing because that's not the right word. I'm undergrowing the clothes that I currently have. This is a 9X shirt from when I wore at my biggest and it's like a dress on me, but I can't afford to buy new clothes. And I even told my sister, I'm like, hey, I, you know, because she asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I said, I, I need some new clothes. I'm losing weight like really fast. 
And she's like, I don't think that makes sense right now because you're losing so much weight. Like we're going to buy you some clothes and spend some money on it. And then what, in another few months, you're going to not even be able to fit in the clothes that we buy you. So, you know, it's just one of those situations. I can't afford new clothes, but if I do go buy some shirts or something, I, I'm paying 50 bucks for a shirt. I'm paying 50 bucks for a pair of shorts. You can easily spend a hundred dollars on, you know, a pair of pants and a shirt because of, you know, king size, how they just overvalue their clothes because it's like, all right, you, you need an entire sweatshop to make a, a shirt for you. You know, it's like <laughs> there's not enough fabric in the world to put together a nice shirt for me. So, you know, that's just one of the things that you're going to face as a big person. Clothes are going to be harder to find. Good looking clothes are going to be harder to find and they're going to be really expensive. Your friends like, uh, okay. And also miss happy being fat. Be happy. You can't fit in this dress since you're so happy. So then Sharonda pulls out her soapbox and starts preaching in the middle of the mall to all of her friends and anyone who will listen that she just told how wonderful it is being fat. Starts telling them how hard it is being fat in America because how dare America allow people to eat a whole chicken finger platter, but then won't make cute clothes for those people who eat that whole chicken platter. You can sell these people McDonald's. You can allow them eat five chickens in one sitting but you won't sell them clothes to fit them you make them this way why not sell clothes to fit them nobody made you that way you made yourself that way i'm just gonna check and make sure i'm still on the screen here yep i am all right yeah you made yourself that way nobody made you that way you're blaming god you're blaming everything else you're, you're blaming the, the clothing industry for not catering to your needs it's like, when are you going to sit down and realize it's your fault? You're the problem. You're developing these, these unhealthy thoughts about being overweight, trying to give yourself confidence and, and a boost and saying, oh, men are more attracted to me because I'm fat, blah, 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 blah. Instead of realizing that there are consequences. Some of them aren't immediate, like I said, but some are. As soon as you start gaining weight, you're going to have to buy some bigger clothes and you're not going to be able to find the stuff that you love to wear like you did before. So that would not change my mind at all. Horrible speech, a zero out of 10. And her friends, it, it didn't change her friend's mind either. They should be naked. You chose to gain weight. And like many of the fat acceptance yeah. individuals of today, she leaves her friends, goes off into the corner and starts crying. I mean, I don't want nobody to have to tell me, well... This is your option. You chose to be this way. I know. I know. It you sucks did. when people hold you accountable for your actions, right? No one forced her to drive to the drive through and order everything off the menu. That's on you. That's your choice. So then Sharonda, the healthy 280 pound woman, goes to the doctor to prove how healthy she is. Your blood pressure is 139 over 83. Is it high? The top number's a little bit high. Should I be worried about the blood pressure? Because you're so young and to have blood pressure readings that high, We'd really probably want to be pretty aggressive as far as treating it. I know some people would probably be like, oh, it's just a little high. It's not a big deal. But that's just the beginning. I mean, for her to be that young, I, I don't know how old she is. She looks like she's maybe in her 20s. And to have blood pressure that's starting to get high, which is 100% the result of her diet and not any other reason. I, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just supposing that eating that amount of food, greasy, crappy, fatty food, is what allowed her to have a higher blood pressure and being 100 pounds overweight. That really has something to do with it too. But I mean, that's why a lot of the people in the fat acceptance movement, they're, they're trying to find, you know, healthcare that, that isn't biased against fat people. But in reality, it's meetings like this where they say, hey, your blood pressure is a little high. You need to lose some weight to get your blood pressure down. And they just throw a fit like, wow, seriously, like you're biased against my weight. You're, you're telling me I need to lose weight. That's all you care about. It's like uh, high blood pressure in your 20s is not good. It's a sign that you're probably going to have a heart attack by the time you're in your 30s. It'll only get worse as you get older and as your heart weakens and you accumulate more fat. Could it be because of my weight? No, 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 absolutely not. It can't be because of your weight. <laughs> To get the opposite of your weights. You're not you're not enough weight. Absolutely. Okay. Oh. So it is. Definitely plays a role. She's in complete denial. 
I mean, the fact that she even had to ask if it had anything to do with her weight just shows how much denial she's in. But hopefully this is a wake-up call for her. It's a very sad day for her and she can't get mad and threaten the doctor's job because it's the early 2000s. People aren't super delusional yet when it comes to obesity. Twitter won't become what it is today until around 2012 and TikTok is nowhere near being created. So instead of her rolling out of the office, buying a hot dog and shoving it in her face to prove to the haters how uh, that she eats, even though we already know that, like Tess Holiday. She just sits there as Yeah, who is Tess Holiday proving wrong by eating that food? And I, I mentioned that earlier in the video. You're not doing nothing to us. You're not shoving it in anybody else's face. You're shoving it in your own face. You're doing the damage to yourself. As the doctor runs through just a few risks that obesity does for your quality of life. And instead of going home and reflecting on the information that she just got, because she is not in fact as healthy as she thinks, and all the Texas toast, blue cheese, and excess weight is going to catch up to her as she ages, she instead says, well, I don't have those things now, so... I know the risk associated with weight gain and, you know, the things that they say could happen with you being overweight but I don't have the diseases, so. Told you, they just ended it at, so, and she drives off. That's the end of her whole story. Just kidding, she actually comes to the realization that she needs to at least get activity in. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten, okay. Talking to the doctor helped me realize that I do need to lose weight. You can get on this one, I'll get on this one. I don't want diabetes. And that's great, so Mike, the very that's absolutely amazing. I'm glad she came to that realization. And she has supportive friends and family who are working out with her, going to the gym with her. We'll let her, we'll sit down and say, hey, you are the reason why you're fat. It's, it's not God. It's not anything else. You're doing this to yourself. So her friends let her have it. Her friends let her realize what she was doing to herself. That's love. Yesterday I did a video on en en enabling couples and I said that's not love because it's not. If you really love somebody, you're not going to enable them. You're not going to. If you love somebody, you're going to get in their face and you're going to say, you're doing this to yourself. You're killing yourself. You need to get some help. And I'm going to support you any way I can. If you want to go to the gym with me, let's go. Let's go for walks. Let's eat together. Let's, let's do this the healthy way. That is what love is. Very, very large, lovable, fat gay guy. His story was the whole trying to find love on a uh, F-E-T-I-S-H site. I'll cover him in another video because there's some updates that I want to get. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this here then. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's very, very interesting. I'm glad she decided to, to get things turned around here. But anyways, let me know what you guys think down below. I really appreciate it. Um... I thought this was a very, very entertaining video, and it it really looks at how far we've come in just a few short years from where people would start taking responsibility, when they would go to the doctor, and they would see the problem with their own size, to where today it's like, let's deny all of medical science, let's deny what our doctors are saying, let's deny the mounds and mounds of evidence that obesity causes all these problems. And it's only getting worse because now younger and younger kids are, you know, being wrapped up in this fat positivity movement because it's on TikTok, it's on Twitter, it's on all these sites where the kids are. And so really where they get their morality from isn't from their parents anymore. It's what, what they're taught on, on TikTok. And I think that's disgusting. But anyways, that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below. Leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. All right. Thank you very much. God bless you.